And I want to encourage you also to lean into the preparation season. Of course, we want to get to 100,000 subscribers as quick as possible. But maybe there's something that you need to learn out of this present season. Maybe even this season in obscurity is preparing you for popularity. Taking the leap into full-time YouTube doesn't normally happen overnight. Usually there is personal development, business development, and overall hustle to get your dreams off the ground and at coasting elevation. I cannot wait to get into today's episode. My name is Heather Torres, and I'm the host of the Think Media Podcast, the number one podcast to help you grow your influence on YouTube and then turn that influence into a high impact and a high profit YouTube channel. And First, before we even get into the episode, I am so honored and excited to share with you our holiday sale. We have a special promotion going on for you right now where we have a brand new course teaching you how to get to your first 1,000 subscribers and earn $1,000 on YouTube without a fancy camera, editing experience, or having to work 50 hours a week on your YouTube channel. You can get all the details at Think Holiday Sale. Com. Well, over the next few weeks during our regular podcast upload, our Tuesday ritual, we are going to be walking through a series called Taking the Leap to Full Time. Now, you might have noticed that we are also uploading bonus episodes here on the podcast, so make sure you're subscribed if you want to get all of the content happening. But this series is going to walk through Taking the Leap to Full Time. And in today's episode, we're talking about the law of preparation. What does it take? What is the pre-work done before you actually step out and start your channel. We're gonna be talking about all that and more over this series. So let's dive into today's featured content. Real talk about quitting your job and going full-time on YouTube. Let me know, do you uh, want to go full-time on YouTube? Is that one of your ambitions? I think by this time, that's why you're here, but recommitting to saying, okay, I'm trying to figure out the path financially, numerically, my niche, all of those details. And I wanna tell you a little bit of my story in terms of uh, my journey to full-time. And I have never shared it at this level of detail before, so I'm super excited. But I want you to see this shot. This is a screenshot of Think Media over the last 10 plus years. Pretty crazy, I mean, 10 million watch time minutes, 1.8 million subscribers, on the way to a million dollars in just YouTube ad revenue generated. But I want you to really get some perspective on this graph. What we're looking at right here, my friends, that's 2010. Can you see the clarity of this, right? Do you see how, how, how flat that is, right? Do you see that, there, in fact, there's a little blip. It's kind of hard to see on the screen, but if you zoom in or you're watching on desktop, you can see this little blip right here, right? Around 2012, like, oh, that was like a good month. And then we we're back to flat line, you know what I'm saying? And so there's 2010, right there, is 2015, okay? And today is 2021. And so the journey has been crazy, but one thing I think that's pretty obvious is you can see that the second five, five years have been a lot crazier than those first five years. But this is why I want to remind you to be patient and to remember to be anchored in commitment, right? Great things take time. And a lot of people overestimate what they can accomplish in one year, but they underestimate what they can accomplish in 10 years. And so I wanna remind you, patience and commitment. But during that journey, at that middle of the graph, right there in 2015, I wanna tell you a story about what happened right there at that inflection point. During that time, my family lost 90% of our income in October of 2015. I'll never forget this month. You see, throughout that year, by this point, I had transitioned to complete freelance work, and I was doing video production, managing YouTube channels, doing social media management for three clients. And I, had, uh, I was living in Las Vegas with my wife and our two dogs, Rosie and Sophie, chihuahuas. And in October of 2015, I'm hustling as hard as I can on YouTube, but I have a lot of work with my freelance clients. And in the first, month, uh, first week of the month, I got a phone call. Hey, Sean, yeah, we got to let you go. Now, these clients were paying me $2,000, $2,000, and $1,000, okay? So I'm earning $5,000 a month, $60,000 a year working for freelance clients, and I'm trying to hustle on my own personal channels right at the same time. First client calls me, Sean, we got to let you go. Kind of bummed, but I'm like, it's only one out of three. What do you do if you need clients? You try to refill that slot. So a little distraught, but 
we're going to keep going. Second week of October 2015, I get a phone call. Bring, Sean, yeah. Uh, hey, you know, we hired some staff. We're rearranging some things. We no longer need your services as a contractor. We got to let you go. Now, oh, how the mighty fall because I lost two $2,000 clients, $2, clients in two weeks. So now I'm down to just that last client. And the honest truth is I'd already felt like they were transitioning, scaling back on some things. I'm like, you know, figures, you know what I mean? It's, you ever had one of those? You're like, might as well also rain. I might as well get a flat tire and get in a fight with my love. I mean, like, it's just one of those days. Oh yeah. And then, you know, and, and it was like one of those months because sure enough, God is my witness. Third week, I get a phone call. Hey, Sean, we got to let you go. So now our income has been eviscerated and about 80 to 90% of our income. Now we're doing all right on YouTube, but it's super early days. You saw the graph. It was like, it was pretty flat. Think media is like 16,000 subscribers at the time. Good, but not like, not really dialed in and earning about around $1,000 a month. But now that all the other income's gone, that $1,000 a month is not enough to pay rent. It's not enough to cover the car bill. It's not enough to pay, you know, for just the insurance and just all the expenses that come with life. And so admittedly, I started to panic a little bit. I'm, I'm worried. I'm like, whoa, this came quick. Like, I'm super nervous. And, and I called a, a friend, David Goldstein. Now, this is David, and you could see him smiling. He is never not smiling because uh, he's independently wealthy. Not that that's the thing, but like, I mean, it's actually true. We're standing in front of his Tesla right back when Tesla's like first dropped because he was on like the waiting list. He got this Tesla and he's like, Sean, do you want to come test the autopilot mode? I turned it into a video with him. That's David Goldstein. He's like sold multiple companies. So him and his wife, uh, Alice, are just on vacation all the time. And, but he's an incredible business mentor. And so I call him. I'm like, David, dude, my clients are firing me. I'm super worried. We've lost money. We actually only have about maybe six months worth of reserves based on income and everything else, before we hit zero in the bank, I'm like, David, I'm super worried. And he goes, well, uh, he goes, Sean, I'm not worried. And I think to myself, it's the most offensive thing that I've ever heard anyone say. I know, David, I know you're not worth it. You just paid cash for a Tesla. You've been on vacation. And I don't, you don't sound worried sipping a pina colada in, in Mexico on the beach with Alice. Like, that's a true story. And, and he's like, I'm like, I know you're not worried. I'm not sure if you heard me, David. I'm worried, right? Like, you don't actually pay my bills, bruh. And so I'm actually kind of nervous. But he goes, no, listen. And I'm glad he said it ultimately because he was like, no, I'm not worried. Because listen, as an entrepreneur, at some point, you have to jump off the cliff. And Sean, it seems like God just kicked you off the cliff and it's your time to fly. You know what I mean? Like, like riddle masters that speak like that. It's like a Wu-Tang proverb, just like it's, you know, when a, a boy's time to jump the cliff. You know what I mean? And I was like, all right, David, like, I know you're speaking truth. I feel that. And, and he was just speaking from a different perspective to say, man, it's time to go all in. Do I, do I try to hire more freelance clients? In this case, I don't. I go all in on YouTube. So, so here's, I want to extrapolate some of the principles that help me navigate to full time. You got to discern for yourself the season you're in, but this is just some moments and details from my story. So here's what happened. This is October, the first three weeks, I lose the freelance clients. Fourth week, I just watch Netflix and like eat Ben and Jerry's. You know, you're trying to recover a little bit. Like, but eventually I'm like, okay, talk to David. All right, it's time to lock and load, patience and commitment, focus and discipline. Let's freaking go. And so between November and December 2015, for two months, I posted 52 YouTube videos. This is just the exact math. I'm going to show you exactly what I did. And at the time... I was a solo YouTube creator. I mean, um, you'll see I was kind of collaborating with others. You know, my friend Benji, who uh, we did video influencers together, we were shooting some stuff, but I was the editor and the thumbnail creator, and I ran the blog, and I downloaded all the music, and I uploaded all the videos, and I did all the VRA and all the titles and all the video optimization and all the descriptions, and I did that for Think Media, and I did it. I, I, you are going to notice I was actually spread across three channels, which I don't think is a good idea, but this is just my story. And, and, and even better is to concentrate all your energy on one channel. But, but for two months, 
Now, mind you, no clients and no job, pure survival. I go all freaking in. 52 original videos. So here's, here's a screenshot of the exact 52 videos that I posted on my channel, Think Media. These are the exact topics. You can see five years ago, I start off best travel tripod bag. By the way, people think like things are crowded. Dude, nobody's doing niche videos like that. That's what we've been talking about like all day. You got to find topics that at 21,000 views that could potentially be profitable, you know, in terms of affiliate marketing, answer a very specific question. When we say specific, that's what we mean. Specific, right? Like that, the best travel tripod bag, 21,000 views over the last five years. But those are the videos on that channel. Then we also had this video influencers channel, which at the time was nice because we would go to one event and interview like a bunch of people all at once. But then I would go back to my house in Vegas and I would just edit, 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 and put all, and put all the videos out and create the thumbnails. And yes, I'm doing Photoshop. That's what I use. And I do have a background in graphic design. So I'm coming into this season with a skill set of building up and learning skills. Remember I asked you, what's your PDP? What's your personal development plan? Like what skills are you learning? I'm coming into this season with skills. So I, there's the videos on, on video influencers. And then here's some videos on my personal channel, Sean Cannell, that I posted as well. Those are the 52 videos. So I've got five lessons that I learned from this season and that I think you can apply to get to full-time faster and even beyond to scale faster as well. And the first lesson is the law of preparation. The law of preparation. Malcolm X said, the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. And Brian Tracy put it this way. He said, effective performance is preceded by painstaking preparation. Now, if you can relate, the reason I love this quote is because of the word painstaking. That's what a lot of people don't want to actually invest in. Like, they're like, okay, I want to prepare. I might want to practice a little bit. Oh, wait, I'm going to get my shoes dirty. I don't know if it gets hard. No, I'm talking that sometimes preparation is painstaking. Like, you need to get uncomfortable. Like, oh, like I, the software, this video editing software is so hard to learn. Have you even tried yet? Yeah, I sat there for like 20 minutes. I looked at it. It was confusing. Well, obviously, like, you sometimes got to actually do things that get you uncomfortable because on the other side of that, painstaking preparation is a skill you develop and eventually you're like, ah, this is so easy. I, like, but it does, it's not necessarily easy on the journey. Can you relate to some pain in the process? Come on, tell me in the comments. And so ultimately the law of preparation was I had built up, keyword here, there was this moment where I lose all my freelance clients, but I had built up the skills, the confidence and the knowledge for that moment. You know, in the 100 Absolutely Unbreakable Laws of Success by Brian Tracy, he says the mark of a serious person, a real professional in any field, is that he takes more time to prepare than the average person. Did you hear that? Those that are professionals, YouTube entrepreneurs, they take more time to prepare than the non-serious person. The non-serious person always attempts to bluff or wing it. Kind of reminds me of the dabbler, right? If you've just been dabbling, it's like, I'm just kind of trying to wing it. I mean, I'm kind of throwing out some thumbnails. I'm trying to, it's like, no, I'm going to get serious about these details, right? And this is why Abraham Lincoln said that, uh, uh, he said as a young man in Springfield, Illinois, I shall study and prepare myself and someday my chance will come. So I'm, he, he just was like, I'm going to study. I'm going to prepare. I'm going to do my best right where I'm at right now. And someday my chance will come. See, that someday became my one day when it was actually a blessing that I lost all my clients. And I had someone speak into my life that said, it's time to jump, man. It's time to take the leap and go all in. And so when I think about this preparation season, it was this whole season. If you look up on the screen now, that, that looks flat, but it's not flat because you know when a tree a, how tall a tree is going to grow, it doesn't grow up first. The roots grow down first. Ooh, it's a little bit invisible for those first five years. And then you look at the last five years, and you might have only looked at the last five months at Think Media. Like, oh, I found you guys. Like, I'm seeing you on so, you know, like I signed up for Growth Video Live. It's pretty cool what you guys got going. Man, this must have just sprung up out of nowhere. Like, what a fast, just like you guys are like overnight success. Overnight success? Bruh, 
Overnight success takes 10 years. And there's that preparation season where you're learning the lessons, where you're learning the details, right? And I was learning from my full-time job as a director of communications at a church, learning teamwork. I'm learning social media. I'm doing this kind of stuff for clients. I was studying this whole time world-class communicators, TED Talks, books. I was creating videos when I could. I was taking online courses and attending educational events like Grow a Video Live. The key here was deliberate practice, and the key here was deliberate experience. Please write that down. See, I was deliberately practicing certain things based on the books I was reading, the podcasts I was listening to, the online courses I was buying, the, attend the events I was attending, but I was also placing myself in situations. I, part of the reason I took the job I was in as a director of communications was I always wanted to plant myself in seasons that would develop me. I always wanted to be immersed in seasons and situations that I could get skills for my vision for the future. And so I'm grateful. You know, I look back and I think, man, maybe I could have gone all in. I actually could have gone all in on Think Media in 2010 and not flown to Vegas and not took this job at a church uh, called the Church LV at the time and been a director of communications. But I still needed some skills and some development. Who even knows what would have been different? But I'm so grateful for the law of preparation. What skills do you need to develop? What character maybe needs to develop in your life now so that, because you don't want to get to a place of success. You don't want your, your, your chemistry or your gifting or your charisma to take you further than your character can keep you. Man, we see it all the time. We see celebrities, we see actors, we see influencers crash and burn because sometimes YouTube growth and YouTube influence and YouTube impact put so much pressure on you that your marriage begins to crumble and you can't handle the stress. So we start giving into uh, toxic habits, behaviors, addictions, and things like that. I'm sorry to go so deep on you, but these are just some of the lessons that I've been learning. And that's the power of the preparation season. I want to encourage you also to lean into the preparation season. Of course, we want to get to 100,000 subscribers as quick as possible, but maybe there's something that you need to learn out of this present season. Maybe even this season in obscurity is preparing you for popularity. And it actually kind of reminds me of the story of David and Goliath, right? You've probably heard this story before, and it's the story of this, this absolutely impossible situation where there's a giant so much bigger, a man of war since birth, someone that there's no reason that, Gal that David could ever take down Goliath. But I want to share this story because this is how you also might feel on YouTube starting in 2021, looking at the competition, looking at yourself and being like, my channel's small. My business is small. I feel like my skills are small. I just feel like I mean, who am I to go up against, uh, against the giants out there? Like, who even am I? Like, they got swords and spears and stuff. I got like a few small stones and I got a sling. Like, who am I to go do this thing? Like, the giants just look so big ahead of me. But I want to encourage you, there's something about the law of preparation. Because when you look into the recorded text of that story of David versus Goliath, the Saul, who was the king at the time, was talking to David. He was like, yo, bro, listen, there's no way you can go up against this guy and possibly win. That's what he says. He goes, you can't fight this guy and win. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of war since his youth. There's no way you could go up against your competitors on YouTube and win. There's no way you could start in 2021 or 2023 or 2025 and win. The giant's too big. But check out what David said, and I love this. He goes, I have been taken care of my father's sheep and goats. And when a lion or a bear came to steal the lamb from the flock, I went after it with a club and I rescued the lamb from its mouth. And if the animal turned on me, I'd catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I don't know if you've ever read the Bible, man. It gets real. This is like some gnarly gangster street stuff here. It's like I'm clubbing lions. And he's like, and I've done this to both lion and bears. I'm going to do it again to this giant. So what does that illustrate? It was that if you're going to be ready to take down the giants in your future, you can't ignore the preparation in your present. There was sheep to protect. 
There was lions to fight. There was bears to fight. And I'll tell you, that sounds pretty scary as well. I mean, really scary. I don't know. David was like a real G, man. He's grabbing lions and clubbing them and stuff. But I mean, you got to fight those smaller battles, those smaller challenges. It starts with just mastering Canva and getting great at thumbnails. It starts with just tweaking in some of your skills so that when the day comes where a giant is standing before you, you're like, listen, dude. I'm so good with this, these stones and this sling, I'm ready to take that thing down. The law of preparation. The law of preparation. So here's my question for you. How deliberate are you being about your practice and your preparation? Deliberate. Could you be more intentional about not just, you know, we're kind of all practicing, but by the way, that word deliberate comes out of a, a study from Malcolm Gladwell on those that get 10,000 hours before they reach like mastery in their field. But here's what they discovered in that study. They discovered that it wasn't just 10,000 hours of activity. It was 10,000 hours of deliberate practice. Come on. Like I'm talking 10,000 hours of being like, no, I know what I'm going for. I know the specific skills I want to sharpen and so that is what I am headed towards. So how deliberate are you being about your practice and your preparation? The law of preparation. How deliberate are you being in practice to prepare you for going full time on YouTube? It was interesting to watch back that clip after our event growth video live, kind of remembering some of the moments in my story. But I'm curious, Heather, you know, over the last five years you've been practicing and developing here at Think Media and a whole new set of skills. And there was five years before that, a plus where you're learning entrepreneurship, business, marketing, social media. So what are some of the things that you think about that you did to deliberately practice to become the leader and the creator and the influencer that you are today? Yeah, a couple things come right to mind. Um, taking my journey back to prior to me working at Think Media, um, I was coaching um, pre and postnatal fitness. So I was working with groups of women and I was learning so many skills when it comes to what we're doing today, which is how do you structure, um, how do you structure in motivation? How do you structure in encouragement? How do you, um, how do you move people from one thing to the next thing? How do you see results? How do you get actual results for people? Um, so when I think about for me, that was a big part of what I was doing. When I go back to even social media, understanding the dynamics of online, you know, what does that even look like? I go back to, you know, cr just creating accounts for small businesses and testing out different types of copy, testing out different images, what's working, what's not working. I was so dialed into trying to understand analytics, which is really boring, really. Like you're just looking at numbers all the time. I was so dialed into trying to figure that out because I wanted to see what made people tick. And I think about my whole journey as an entrepreneur, it really was that I wanted to consistently study what made people actually take action. Like what was the action of, of all of their things? And when I think back, it was, it was, you know, helping in pre and postnatal fitness. It was working for small businesses. It was working at Washington state parks and it was just understanding, understanding dynamics of what makes people move. Yeah. And I think this is, can be encouraging because it shows us that the journey to full time is not overnight mm -hmm. and that sometimes we're comparing ourselves to others. We don't know what their preparation season has been. Mm -hmm. I mean, I look back and again, there's so many things. YouTube is not just learning cameras. You got to learn that. It's not just learning editing or learning how to make thumbnails or even learning optimization or titles and all that different stuff. But uh, my season in not just being in church, I was a part of a Bible school where I was teaching mm -hmm. and in classes learning how to teach, mm -hmm. how to structure teaching, which is something that a lot of us do on YouTube. We actually teach. And the quality of that is going to be determined by how good of a teacher you are, mm -hmm. by how you might structure things with story or the, your opening argument or all these different details. These are some of the things that, you know, I think Think Media Podcast listeners could think about. Now, what have you learned in terms of debate class? Mm -hmm. like it's going to help you maybe make a persuasive argument. And so, um, you know, as we maybe put some handles on here, and I want to hear some more um, insights from you. I think there's three big things that I want to unpack in terms of the law of preparation on the journey to full time. The first is, is a PDP, a personal development plan, this idea of deliberate practice and deliberate experience. And then finally, the proximity principle. And so if we're to put handles on this and even some maybe takeaways and tips, 
I think that, first of all, you do need a PDP. Now, it might not be super official. Maybe people don't think about that term. But people like those who really go full time, those who are become great at their craft and build a career, they do have a personal development plan Mm -hmm. for you. How what were some of the things you did intentionally to just grow pre really focusing on YouTube and even during this YouTube season? Yeah, I actually take it all the way back to um, when I had my first baby. After I had my first baby, um, I experienced without knowing that I had postpartum depression. And when you're in that season and it, it, it feels really foggy, your days just kind of drift. You don't really know. I mean, you know you're in a day, obviously, but it just you just feel like you're under this cloud. And I just remember thinking, I've got to figure out how to get out of this. And I was fortunate enough to seek help. And one of the things that my counselor said was, um, what are you doing to just get outside? What are you doing as a daily routine to just get yourself outside? So when I think all the way back, not what I'm doing today, but where I really started to understand personal development was in this idea of what is my daily routine and what does winning look like? And when I think back, it was things like, did I make my bed today? Personal development is, are you, do you have tidiness around you, right? Are you, are you accomplishing something? And at that point with postpartum depression, it was, are you making your bed? Um, Am I working out every day? And that doesn't mean I'm like lifting weights and like, you know, going hardcore. Did I go for a walk? Did I do, you know, what was I doing? And then it started to develop into what am I actually listening to? What am I putting into myself? Am I watching way too much Oprah? Yes, I was, right? Way too much Oprah, way too much HGTV or TLC at that time. Way too much like, I didn't know I was pregnant type stuff. You know, like the crazy things because I was just sitting as like kind of in this moment and I thought, no, no, I, I'm turning off the TV. What can I put into my mind that could actually be beneficial? And that's actually when I discovered Tony Robbins. And whether you agree or don't agree with Tony Robbins, that doesn't bother me at all. But for me, I was just, then invited into this whole new space of what to think. So my personal development plan starting way back in this journey was really about my health um, of my mind, body, and soul. And so I really started to dive into what was that. Now it's fully developed into a morning routine. I'm so structured on, you know, how can we help develop other people and, and just so much more, but really it starts and my, and when I start to fall off of it, it always go back, goes back to those things, my health, my um, body, mind, and soul. And that's similar to me as well. I'm a huge believer in um, you are what you eat. Mm-hmm. If you want to become a full-time YouTuber, are you eating the diet that is going to develop you into that character? Are yeah. you learning those skills? And I think part of a personal development plan, I think a lot of people can get stuck. Have you noticed this? In Okay, well, growth for me is watching then endless YouTube videos, <laughs> endless online courses, endless books, endless uh, podcasts, and that can lead to information overload, Mm -hmm. and it can lead to overwhelm. We also need that experience. Have you noticed this? Absolutely, and for me, it really, when I think back to, you know, um, I've never been really comfortable in front of the camera. I am now because I've developed that skill, but man, when I go back to it, I was like, well, how can I just make fun videos for my church, or how can I like get around what I want to be doing? How can I be around people who are growing businesses, and what does that look like? And And so much of it was just sitting behind and not actually doing. And people need to do. They need to actually step up and not just consume, but create. And actually, you know, really dive into where where do they want to go and where where are they stepping outside their comfort zone to make those things happen? How about you? Yeah, well, I mentioned in that talk the 10,000 hour rule too. And I think when Malcolm Gladwell in the book Outliers was unpacking that study, it was that those who had mastery in their craft had 10,000 hours of Mm. deliberate practice. They didn't have 10,000 hours of listening to a podcast. Now we hope that you keep listening to the Think Media podcast because of course, education, information, that's an aspect of sharpening the saw, Mm -hmm. but deliberate practice is the real needle mover. Yeah, and I have a great example. My husband, Isaiah, you know, he's approaching 44 and because we've been able to, to grow this business, he has the opportunity now to really chase his dreams. You know, he really supported our family um, early on, working two jobs, three jobs, you know, developing out a career. And now because we're in this situation where um, we're both able to really focus on what we want to do, um, he now has decided to become a pro golfer. Now he's doing great. He's a semi-pro golfer right now, doing different things, but the shift happened for him in the same way you're saying about those 10,000 hours from 
watching golf every weekend and mm. like sometimes practicing and like going out with the guys to now no he's invested into this he is he is you know he's a membership at a place and not just to go on Saturdays and drink beers but he's going almost every day to be practicing his different putts he's going uh he's studying um what does this iron do versus that iron how about you know when the wind is like this what does that do to the ball and you know really understanding that it's not just about the consumption of the thing you want to do mm. but it's about doing the things that you actually want to do and it goes back to any i mean you look at the any of the greats kobe bryant i'm just naming sports people now which is probably the only sports person i know uh but they were always doing things behind the scenes that you never saw which is what actually affected the games that they played yeah i mean i think that that is maybe a call out to some a lot of people listening to this and a lot of aspiring full-time youtubers are you practicing 10,000 hours or are you just watching other creators mm -hmm. watching your favorite teachers on YouTube constantly consuming content mm -hmm. it's not 10,000 hours of watching YouTube it's 10,000 hours of deliberate practice and that is also deliberate experience mm -hmm. and one of my favorite concepts uh, I learned a term for it later and it sort of spoke to what I referenced the 2010 to the 2015 era in my life of the proximity principle. Mm -hmm. Now, our friend Ken Coleman at Ramsey Solutions really helps people with their careers. And he talks about, uh, he has a book called The Proximity Principle. And it's simply this, that if you want to do something in your future, the question is, what do you want to do in your future? If you're listening to this series on the Think Media podcast, you want to be full-time on YouTube. You want to be a YouTube entrepreneur. Okay. If you want to do that, can you today, before the views are there, before the subscribers are there, and you need to have some type of a job, could you find a job or an internship or a place where you work part-time that actually will get you closer to your goal? Mm -hmm. Can you get in proximity with somebody who's already doing what you wanna do? Mm -hmm. And sometimes people think, well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know any full-time YouTubers that I could go work for. Well, I didn't work for a full-time YouTuber. Mm -hmm. I worked at a church. Mm -hmm. Because what I had identified was I identified the skill sets. I identified that, okay, what are some of the things I need to learn? I need to learn communication. Mm -hmm. I need to learn um, teamwork and leadership. I need to learn communication for a team, not just communication on camera or on our online stream or to people in seats. I want to understand human psychology. I want to understand people. I want to understand. And so... Uh, I immersed myself and uh, I, I believe there's one part of things where, you know, we make our plans, God directs our steps, and I can see that through line in my entire life. But I was also making a practical decision when I got the opportunity to move to Las Vegas and work under Benny Perez, who's a phenomenal global communicator who had built this incredible church that also um, get, was this huge opportunity that also scared me, mm -hmm. stretched me way out of my comfort zone. It was way beyond where I was at. That environment leveled me up. And that tipping point, that one day when I had to go full time was a lot of preparation. That was my season of lions, tigers, and bears, and, and, and constantly be putting, sometimes I'd be challenged to do things like, hey, do you want to speak on Sunday? One time I got to speak on Sunday, these, the 1,500 people, I think, would be sitting in a service. It's kind of scary. I'd be like, well, I'd spoke to 50. Mm -hmm. Now that's it's kind of a lot writing on this. Multi-generations, mm -hmm. people of all ages. There's every, every generations in the room. Now I'm really in pressure situations that are developing me. And that's the proximity principle. Who can you get around? Who can you intern for? What volunteer work can you do? Or what career can you take? Or what side work can you take? Even those freelance clients that I took, I was so excited to work for them because I was cutting up their longer form communication into micro social media clips because I knew I wanted to do that in the future. Mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to write books in the future and I was helping Benny Perez write books and, and working with getting the covers designed. Proximity principle in your preparation season. Man, it's so important. And I always wonder, and I think we could ask the Think Media podcast this, you know, we reference the story of David and Goliath. Like, what would have happened if David had ran away from the lion and the bear during those seasons? What would have happened? Like, and, and honestly, I'm not, I, I would have. <laughs> if a bear, if I got 100 sheep and a bear comes up and grabs wow. one of the sheep, mm -hmm. I'm just doing the math. I'm like, I still got 99, dude. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I mean, because, and oh, man, and these 99 sheep, like, to be honest, if their shepherd gets taken out, man, there could be more cars. I'm now I'm like justifying in my mind. I'm like reasoning. I'm like, you know what? Bear's hungry. This is this is kind of the law of nature. Yeah. Like there's a lot of ways I could reason that away. But 
what that tells us is David wasn't shrinking back from the smaller battles today mm -hmm. that had he not fought and won those, he wouldn't have been ready for the bigger battle tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Man, that, that, that pressure season, that painstaking preparation, and not just deliberate practice or pod, deliberate podcasts, mm -hmm. but deliberate experience. What do you think about that? Yeah, you're so hitting it. And, you know, I think one of the things, too, is, um, is the give without the ask. And when you're getting in these situations, when you are trying to get in proximity, I remember um, so many times where it's like someone's working on this project and I'm like, can I just be a part of it? Like, can I just like be a fly on the wall? I will hold, I will take out the trash. Yes. I will, you know, whatever that is and not feeling like you need to be the main person. I was like, I just want to be around this. And uh, I was, uh, when I was in my early twenties, I was a, a part of a company and I was just around these people who were building these businesses. And I'm like, can I just carry your bag like to the thing so that we can just talk in the elevator and thinking about that type of proximity. But even going deeper when you think about are you actually putting yourself in uncomfortable situations like are you actually mm. signing up for the things that scare you a little bit are you going to the conference where you're like i don't know any of this but the people around me will mm. um that's so important and and are you involved in something that's bigger than you are you involved in something i'm sure sean when you were at the church and you were like I'm, i want to develop these skills you weren't actually like thinking one day at think media i'm gonna hire 18 people you were like not at all you were like you know what this is actually moving me outside of my comfort zone and I'm going to just dig into it. I'm going to figure out what is, what can I learn from this situation so that later in life I can apply it. Being around people, getting in proximity, being in the right rooms, being near the people who are doing the thing, so important. But so many people go into those situations saying, what can I get out of this? Rather than just saying, what can I just give to this situation? Whether it's a low skill, what whatever it is. You'll, you'll talk later in this series about how you and I met. There was no ask. It was like, hey, I want to get in proximity to someone who's doing something kind of like me. How can we work together? Yep. What can we do together? What skills can I bring to the table? And there was no ask on either one of our parts. Right. It was very much just like, hey, we both have a vision. Let's just kind of get around people who are doing the things that we want to do. So what meetups are you going to? What groups are you a part of? Where are you being pressured? Pressure makes diamonds. Yes. Where are you being refined in your life right now? Man, I'm so pumped, and those are great insights. This five-part series is going to be fun, mm -hmm. and we're on this mission to help people get to full-time. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes, I think realistically, we want to help people get to full-time faster. It really depends on where you're starting. Yeah. You know, but maybe unpacking that there's these 2010 to 2015 season of Think Media, and then there's even the last 2015 to 2021 and beyond. These different seasons, like great things take time. Yeah. And so in this Law of Preparation episode, it's a five-part series, and I think each of these points that we're going to kind of build out some nuances around are absolutely critical. Kind of a recap for you, Think Media Podcast. What is your personal development plan? Like, what are you intentionally learning? What skills do you need to develop next in terms of your YouTube career? Or maybe, and it might not just be YouTube, mm -hmm. in terms of maybe the business you're gonna build about around YouTube, or who you need to become character-wise as a leader, or just even just basic discipline in life. What are you deliberately practicing? And is there something that you could have deliberate experience in right now? Sometimes, uh, there was part of, I was chipping away at my YouTube channel on the side, Heather, um, and, but my main priority was the church. I knew what my priorities were right. because that was my career. It was who was paying me. So I wasn't posting a video a week. I was posting a video every week during summer and then a video when I could during other seasons of my life, because I was really, I knew the season I was in and yeah. I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss, that I was planted deeply in the season that I was in and that I didn't miss on all of the potential nutrients mm. around me from interpersonal relationships, teamwork relationships, opportunities, and that season really developed me. Again, if you're listening to this, would you be willing to be maybe a little bit more patient with your timeline? Mm -hmm. I might not be full-time on YouTube in two years because for the next two years, I, I need some deliberate experience. Mm -hmm. I wanna actually get that painstaking preparation, so I'm gonna take that job or switch my career or go work at that marketing firm or go join that person uh, or apply to think media mm -hmm. or whatever and say like, I actually realize I need to be immersed. And I've actually learned, I really believe this, that actually the best way to get to your own vision is to serve someone else's vision first. Preach, man, and we've both lived that. We've both yeah. lived it. Yeah. And, and, and completely thinking that sometimes 
that ambition to rush towards our vision, it may not a work out or again, we might get there and we're not ready for it. We haven't developed the character for it. So Mm -hmm. what is your PDP? What are you deliberately practicing? And, and then what, what about the proximity principle? Who could you get around? Who could you reach out to? I think people are afraid. Just Mm -hmm. go for it. Yeah. Just try. They might say no. There might be, you know, you could try to do an internship. You could try to work at a different company. You could, you might also have to be willing to move. Yes. We've both done that. We've both done that. I, yeah. I, I mo- the move to Las Vegas triggered a series of events in my life that are absolutely remarkable. I could have never predicted it. Yeah. But I realized that's true proximity principle. Mm-hmm. We're living in an era where you can do things online. You can be on Teams, on Zoom. You can work remote. But there's something powerful about proximity that I really believe can push a lot of us towards full time on YouTube. Well, I hope that that content helped you. And your takeaway question today is, are you putting in the hours and the practice needed to actually grow this YouTube channel? Are you around the people that you want to be around in order to grow this YouTube channel? We're gonna be diving into more of this topic over the next few weeks. So make sure that you're subscribed here on the podcast, whether you're listening to it on Apple iTunes, or if you're over on YouTube watching this or listening while you're doing the dishes, make sure you're subscribed wherever you are consuming this content. And today I would love to shout out one of our trusted listeners, Um, And it's brought to you by our Think Holiday Sale. This is a brand new course that we have for you. So you can get all of the details of how you can get your first or next 1,000 subscribers, your first 1,000 or next dollars on YouTube, and so much more. So go to thinkholidaysale.com for the latest promotion and all of the details. Now, I wanna shout out Braxter Vision. Braxter says, has it all, fun and inspirational content that speaks to mind, body, and soul for both your business and your personal lifestyle goals. So yeah, it basically has it all. Thank you so much, Baxter, for that comment. That is what our heart and mission is here on the Think Media Podcast. We want to bring you conversations with different influencers and go deeper into the conversations not really talked about on the platform. So thank you so much for leaving that comment over on Apple iTunes. If you have not yet rated and reviewed the podcast, you can do that now after you're done listening to today's episode. And I also wanna shout out Birgit Beckley from our YouTube channel. Thank you so much, Think Media team and Sean for having me on today. Loved the conversation and gave us a lot to chew on. See you guys at Growth Video Live 2022. Brandon and Brigitte. Well, thank you so much for leaving that comment. I cannot wait to hug you in person at Grow With Video Live 2022. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode and we'll catch you in the next one. Did you see thinkmediasale.com? For the holidays, we're giving you 80% off our brand new YouTube Made Simple course bundle. Get over $1,900 worth of our best courses, tools, templates, and more. Just go to thinkmediasale.com.